Yes. Call the meeting to order at 6.06. So this is the executive session minutes okay. and the Waitley School Committee meeting for... Oh, these are all the executive session and you must have the May 7th school committee meetings. So we're going to agree, I mean, you're going to vote on whether to accept those. It doesn't mean that those executive session minutes will be posted, just that you accept them. Do we need a roll call to accept the, I don't think, I don't think so, but we're going to do a roll call anyway to accept those minute, those minutes. How about if we, uh, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from May 7th, the regular minutes. Mm -hmm. Second. Yeah, second. Thank you. Okay. And then executive session on May 7th and executive session November 6th. I'll make a I'll make a motion for minutes from May 7, 2018 and minutes from November 6, 2017. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Bob? Yes. Maureen? Yes. And Kate? Yes. Thank you so much. So when you said these aren't going to be posted, what is I'm not sure they're, they're going to be posted, okay. but before I leave, um, the, the notes were written by me, so we want to approve the executive session notes. I see. Okay. I think we do, we release executive session minutes one, one, one year, year after the meeting. Meeting. After the meeting date. Okay. So those right. will come out. So it's just the And your subject. Never get released. Correct. We approve them, but we never. Some of them we don't release because of that. Okay. So Patty, we'll hand it over to you. Okay. So you have some warrants to sign tonight. There's eight of them, totaling thirty-five thousand one hundred and two dollars and thirteen cents. Um, I don't see anything glaring at us that we will not finish the year in the positive. Um, what we're going to focus on this summer is um, any remainder money we're going to use for technology projects. Um, in the past, we've been loading up Bob Lesko at summer projects, and we can't get it done in time to, to get the bills paid before August. So um, I'm going to be meeting with Scott, which I haven't had a chance because he's been on paternity leave. So mm -hmm. Scott and I are going to get together and review all the schools and what their technology needs are. And that's what we're going to focus on as long as you are okay with that. Do we know what the projects are? I, I don't at this point, Katie, because okay. I haven't had a chance to sit down. It, would, it may be... Um, for this school and Louise, maybe you can help me with this. I think we need some more Chromebook carts um, here and some mm -hmm. smart, uh, some replacement of some smart boards. Some mm -hmm. have been old and not working. As well. And they're just easier. It's cheaper to replace than repair mm -hmm. at this point because there there's new updated uh, technology. So I guess with the summer, it's transition. It's a little tricky because we don't meet in the summer. So Correct. who would have the authority with all the transition going just so on? That we don't, just, to, you, you, just that we don't exceed our general ledger balance, that we would zero it. Okay. So that would be under the interim or the new principal, depending. And I, I do have a statement for capital projects um, when it comes up in the okay. agenda. Okay. Good. And there is, um, yeah, the IT is finishing current, finishing up the phone system. Okay, so you'll identify for with Scott what might need to be done, mm -hmm. and we'll use any year-end funds to, uh, to, 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 to build it, and then you'll coordinate with that. whoever's here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Is that everything? Yes. Unless okay. anyone has any questions. Um, you know, the budget you shared that is, or the financial summary that you shared is up to date. I noticed that the encumbrances for all the salaries are over, all of the, like the administrative salaries uh, that pushes the, the budgets over. No, I was just wondering. Oh, okay, so <laughs> the, so when what what I'm doing right now is I'm encumber I'm manually encumbering 
Um, I remember you saying this. Is right. this the same problem again? It is. Okay. So what so what happened was before, um, because I had to make an adjustment to the report, mm -hmm. um, Stephen had already posted the June 1st uh, payrolls. <laughs> so I had to reverse them all. So um, I, didn't, I didn't pick up that he had already posted the fiscal agent payroll. So I didn't reverse that. So that's okay. probably why so we're double counting. counting. Yeah. So they really aren't over. They probably are Because they should be very close to zero. To zero. Or if not zero. Um, <laughs> Some of them will be over because we did not have them at the beginning of the year, and that would be the um, the cafeteria team leader. Mm -hmm. Okay, but all the uh, central office ones are should over. be close to zero. Yes, that's great. Okay, so that means we're in better shape than this. Yes, is telling us. Okay, great. Um, okay, well we have. Um, I, I guess I got. A, you have a I question? just got a question. Since you brought up the cafeteria, will we have some type of report? In September, on on a, how our year went. Sure. I, as soon as we've, um, Mary and I, um, let me just pull this up. Mary and I did work on the uh, on Waitley, and I think we have through April right now. So let me just, and then what I, as soon as we finish the year, what I will do is send you out an email with the final school lunch, um, how we did. And one of the things that I was not aware of that we now have to watch is that we can't have more than three months worth of revenue sitting in the lunch balance. So I will have to at some point take some of our salaries and put them back into the school lunch balance to keep that down. Um, until, the, unless um, I talk with Bob Lesko, the other thing we can do, and, and with Mary DeLusa, um, buy a piece of equipment because I know they were having a problem with something. One of the pieces of equipment was because it had something to do with the water supply. It corroded something. So, um, and I can't remember the name of the uh, piece of equipment. So I was going to talk with them and see if we can get that either replaced over the summer, repaired over the summer, because it would help the kitchen, uh, the women in the kitchen uh, prep, prep uh, easier. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we are showing through April um, a deficit of $6,076.20. Um, and I can tell you that last year at the same time, through April, we were at a loss of $9,687.05. So that's a difference of $3,000. And that does include your share of what we paid for the consultant. So we mm. are on the right path. Mary is making great decisions. Um, our participation seems to be up. So I think things are going very well. And as soon as we can post May, because when we were doing this, they, we don't have the May payrolls. They're coming in this week, as May was last week. <laughs> so as soon as we get May and June done, I will send you guys an email with the, the, with the profit and loss for the year and give you a little um, synopsis of how it, it compares to last year. And does Great. that include the salaries, the 6000 It does. Uh, it, it does. It does. It does. Okay. Even though they're, in, they're, they're right coming out of the budget. general budget. Oh, right. Great. Okay. That's good news. Thanks. Okay, any other questions on the finances? We have some public here today. Yeah. Is there a public comment? Yes, yes. I made a, a short list. Um, some things are probably quicker than others. I heard you say you're going to replace some smart boards in the schools. And I use smart boards at Smith. I think 10 years ago, smart boards were awesome. Uh, we had good support. And over the years, smart boards, the actual equipment, has become worse and worse, hard to get service. Mm -hmm. Something like that should not be less expensive to replace than to repair. Um, the, the company's really not doing a good job here in the Northeast. We found a lot of other uh, systems that cost far less and do the same thing. And I use one in my classroom at Smith. If anybody would like to come down and take a look at that um, and, and see, you can probably cut your equipment cost in half 
with the um, with the, the and, yeah. of, with that you're using, and then I say smart boards, but Scott Paul is probably already saying stop saying smart boards. That sounds oh, okay, like, you know, okay, because because that, that's actually important. Not being up to date on technology, yeah. but if you want to send me an email with right. what you're recommending, I will get that to Scott Paul. Oh, okay, and look at that. And uh, and you may not be aware of this, but the folks at Wasman Audio, uh, they service those things at many of the five colleges. Uh, they installed the ones in my that I use in my lab now. W so, -A -S -S -M -A -N, M A N, yeah, from uh, Route Five and Ten in Waitley, um, and they're they're lovely and they're they're so much better than the recent smart boards. So uh, so I'm glad to hear you. It might not really be smart yeah. boards. Um, <laughs> oh okay. No more Kleenex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, I'm still calling them chalkboards, not whiteboards. Yeah. Oh. But thank you. Which well, for you, I mean, useful to know what's yeah. Going I, yeah. And, and I understand. I mean, on, on here it says that Peter Christofoli is in the room, so that's. The, <laughs> I, so I know not everything that's that's said or in writing is necessarily 100% uh, true. Um, the I guess my other comments are mostly. Um, w one of them is just to to, to the school committee. Um, that I really feel strongly that for the Union 38 superintendent search that it should not just be an internal search. This really needs to be an external search. Uh, if we don't have enough money to make it a nationwide search, then at least a regional search, New York, New England, Northeast, whatever it happens to be. We really have to look at as large a pool as possible I know there's a lot of defeatists out there who say, oh, we can't pay enough to attract anybody for this job. Um, and I think that's not been true historically. We've had really good people in this job in the past. And uh, I, as both a taxpayer and a selectman, uh, really urge you to do whatever you can on that committee to really make sure we do as wide a search as possible on that. So that was just feedback for the, for the committee. Um, the other thing I have is mostly a, a question. I was just having a conversation with our town clerk regarding um, uh, uh, agreements and negotiations. And my understanding is that there's an agreement being negotiated uh, at this point between uh, maybe the school system and our former principal, or I don't know all the details of it, obviously. It's probably been in... No, I have, a, I have a question regarding the, comp the confidentiality part of it. My understanding, things like teacher negotiations are confidential until the agreement is reached and then the agreement is public. And my understanding is that law would apply to whatever you're negotiating. Absolutely not. There is a... Yeah, so there must be an exemption. So that's the question. If there's an exemption, I would like to know which exemption it is it's that you're using. Yeah. It's in the. Uh, yeah, I don't have it with I'll have to contact the school's attorney. But it is. It's like, yeah, so, that, that's, so that's my question. Is what, if, there's an, if you're using an exemption, I'd like to know what the exemption is. Okay. Um, I think there, is, there are many, many people who would like to know more about the circumstances of the resignation. I think that's actually not an unfair thing. Um, and I think it does not do our schools well when that sort of thing is swept under the rug. You know, daylight is one of the best disinfectants. Um, so, so I urge you to be as open as you possibly can with that, and I will, I, I, I will press forward regarding whether the exemption applies, um, okay. just because I think that's the right thing to do. Um, I think that was all, sorry, that was all I think that I was going to uh, ask and, um, and, uh, and add as public comment. Great. Are you going to move the select yeah. board? Oh, um, I suppose that there's something later on the agenda, and I know you're not, not supposed to normally go to those in, in public comment, but um, I'm likely to be the selectman's representative on your uh, search committee for the new principal. Mm -hmm. It won't be official until our meeting on the 15th. So of course they could change their mind, and you might have Fred. <laughs> but uh, 
uh, oh, but at, at this point, the sort of the uh, uh, Brian uh, was kind of testing the water. So I don't know because I haven't talked to John and Fred, uh, but that's likely to happen. Um, so this principal search timeline and procedure, um, if it can happen as quickly as as early as possible in the meeting, I will get out of your hair. <laughs> but uh, I know you, you you might not have the flexibility to move items around on your agenda, and I understand if not. Um, um. But uh, that's well, I know that Luis, he did receive an email saying that you were going to be the representative pending the vote. Yes. And Luis did forward you information on your email also. I have not. Seen, got, oh, when? Probably you haven't when, seen it because it was like 5 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> oh, if it was 4.30, I would have seen it. But 5, I would not have. I can't so. tell you the exact minute. But it was the end of the day. Um, so you, can't, you can't tell me the no, exact minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, I am happy to jump to that unless you guys need to get through the vote. Patty needs to get going. No, but I think you need a motion to take it out of order. Okay. So we'll just motion to take this. Okay. Okay, Louise, you're on. All right. Well, um, this is I, I'm printing for you all of the information, and um, and Joyce, this is all in your email, but I'll give it to you here in okay, hard copy. Okay. Thank you. Um, so this is um, a process that um, I modeled on a process we've used in um, other schools. And um, I chaired the committee in Conway and used a very similar process. So um, first, uh, we'll form a committee. And um, we're going to have uh, two parent reps um, will be invited, um, one rep of the school committee, one representative of the community. So. Um, that's what Joyce was speaking of. Two teachers, one specialist teacher, and one uh, Waitley staff member, and that person has been chosen Mary mm -hmm. uh, Lazensky, who works very closely with the principal. Um, I'll be facilitating. Uh, the parent community um, was notified of the opportunity. When I wrote this, I said, will be notified. Um, uh, interested parents are invited to submit a statement in writing to the school council. So we are getting those in now. Mm -hmm. We have, um, I believe, three okay. as of this moment. Um, the school council will um, review the statements and select two parent reps. Um, the search committee will um, have an initial planning meeting, I'm hoping for this Friday. Um, we're condensing the timeline because we would like an opportunity for um, the community and the, the faculty and the staff here to meet <coughs> the candidates um, during the school, uh, when school is in session. Staff survey has been distributed online um, and I'm already getting, it's a, it's a Google survey um, and teachers are already responding um, and there's a copy of those surveys in here. Um, the parent survey was distributed both online and in hard copy to ensure that all families are off offered the opportunity to share their thoughts. So what we're looking for is what are you seeking in a principal, um, looking for comments, and that, that will be reviewed before the committee begins even looking at the resumes. Um, parent responses, um, as I said, will be reviewed by the member search committee prior to reviewing the resumes so we can see what the commonalities are and ensure that we are um, reflecting what the community is saying that they are seeking, both the staff community and the family community. Um, the position has been advertised online um, in uh, an online resource called School Spring, and that's um, become a, it's an international um, search engine, or it's not really a search engine, it's a posting site where people who are looking for positions regularly check it. It is the the sort of Amazon of, <laughs> of, uh, of um, looking for a, an education job in the K-12 system. So it's been posted since May 30th, um, and it has been in print media, it's been in the Daily Hampshire Gazette this weekend, and in the Greenfield Recorder. Um, as of this, I last checked at four o'clock, we had 21 applications. Wow. So, um, the, um, in the middle of June, um, after we have planning meeting to talk about the parameters of the search, we will then review the applications and identify candidates to invite. And the number of candidates we invite depends on um, the, the, uh, the search committee. We might find five we want to invite, we might find 10, but we will look at um, those who meet the qualifications. 
Uh, we'll have initial interviews, um, we're hoping, mid to late June. And um, again, I'm hoping to get those in prior to the end of school because um, it's, it's a nice opportunity for the candidates to see the school in action and um, get a sense of what, what they're actually applying for. Uh, the search committee, after the interviews, um, will recommend finalists from those interviewed. Um, the finalists will then be invited to visit with, with Waitley to meet staff and faculty and with the parent community. So the parent and the broader community will be invited to come. We'll have um, one of the things we did in Conway that worked, and depending on this, this community, what time of day works, is we had a breakfast. We invited anybody in the community interested, and we invited written feedback. And we had um, feedback sheets right there on the way out. People offered their feedback um, on the candidates, both the staff, our staff, faculty, and um, anybody who comes and meets with the person. Um, the uh, formal, um, a format for gathering, again, it would be written <coughs> feedback. Members of the search committee will um, also, if feasible, and this is why it would be great to do before the end of the year, conduct site visits to any schools where the current candidates, where the current candidates currently work. Um, if we can't do site visits, perhaps we will Skype with people and the committee will come up with a list of who they would like to talk to. In other words, you know, maybe we want to talk to two teachers, uh, three parents, and so we'll come up with that list and, and use that to um, get feedback um, from what we call the site visits. And then um, in, in early to mid-July, the superintendent will review the written feedback from the community, conduct interviews, conduct the reference checks, and then um, we hope by mid to late July, we will know who the new principal will be. So that's the um, detail. This is the um, timeline. It's, it is an optimistic timeline, but I'm also um, feeling that um, it's not unrealistic, being that um, as soon as we put it in, we got within hours <coughs> had candidates, and since, since uh, the weekend, now we have, as I said, 21. I'm anticipating more. Hmm. Um, and then this is the posting that went out. Um, so I just wanted you to have a copy of what we said. We set a high bar, high standard. Um, then these are the, the next page is the email that um, I sent out to the faculty explaining the process. The following is the um, family email and hard copy went home to families uh, on May 31st. The next page is, um, it is uh, parents who are interested in serving on the committee are asked to uh, submit a written statement and the school council will review those and select the parents they feel will best represent. And then this is the letter I sent out about the parent survey. And then here's the family or family survey and the faculty and staff survey. The questions are, what do you value? What skills are we seeking? And what do you hope the next principal will bring? And space for additional comments. And then the final page are the Massachusetts Department of Elementary Secondary Education Professional Standards for school level administrative leadership that the committee will also review and ensure that um, the candidates meet those standards. So that's that's the process, that's where we are. I'm hoping by uh, this Friday to be able to uh, get the ball rolling with reviewing um, the process with the committee members. So, any questions about that? So the committee has been? Not yet. Okay. I, we've, um, I believe tomorrow night the school council, Wednesday, no, Wednesday, Wednesday I'm sorry. Yeah. Wednesday night the school council will meet and review the parent submissions and choose two parents to participate. And the teachers, I don't teachers know. Teachers union will select who they would like to represent them. Um, so they um, will give me the names by Wednesday. They've already sent out and asked people to come forward if they're interested. So they will select their representatives. And then um, the Waitley town representatives will select their their representative, and you folks will select your representative. Right, I don't know if we need to formally do that in this meeting, but it would probably be a good idea since you're all here. Yeah. <laughs> I make a motion to have Katie as our school representative in the principal search. I second. Is that fast enough for you? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. I just like okay. to be official. 
for Thank principal you. search. Thank you. Just okay. a just a question. Yes. Um, can other during the interviews or search can other <clears throat> committee members go to these meetings just to sit in the in the wings? Not that the interviews are not public but until the final stages. When the finalists are identified, those will be public meetings. Okay. But the initial interviews are not public meetings. Okay. So um, I didn't know if us being on the school committee that we could do that. No, we're no we different do than that. anybody then. Yeah, we don't. Okay. We don't do that. It's, it's, just it's a private. Um, but then once finalists are identified, then their names are made public, and then at that point, that um, what worked, as I said, what worked well in the, the prior search was having <coughs> this morning where, and we did invite the cable access in. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the cable access person was ill that day, so we didn't get it, but we're happy to do that here so people out in the community can see who these finalists, if they can't make it to the meeting. Mm -hmm. When the finalists came, come in, and it was informal, but t people had a lot of questions, and they were, um, it was two separate days, we didn't <laughs> and then they stayed and had um, lunch with faculty who wanted to come in and ask questions. So the nice thing about it is um, we had a lot of feedback about the candidates and so when the superintendent went to do the final interviews she had a um, significant amount of feedback about both candidates and then did a reference check. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I'd like to do that. That's why the, the timeline's a little bit condensed because we, we need to get this in before to everybody's away for the summer. Is this timeline more condensed than the Conway search? Yes, we had three months. If we spent three months, we would be in September. Um, and so we had ample um, uh, knowledge that the principal was retiring. Yeah. Um, and she announced that in September. We conducted the search. I began it in January. And it took um, until early April. Um, and how many people did you get applying? 26. <laughs> I think um, what the difference is I wouldn't ask for the initial meeting to be so soon, give it a little more time, but there's no step that was taken in Waitley that, I mean in Conway that I'm leaving out here. Mm -hmm. It's just instead of saying after the interviews, we'll go to site visits two weeks from now, we're doing it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that we're not leaving any important step out and it won't compromise um, the information we get. We're just going to leave the candidates a little less breathing room. Mm -hmm. is what's going to happen. You know, they might turn around and we might say, you're a finalist, we'd like to visit your school by Friday. And so we'll tell people that in the initial interview. If you are selected as a finalist, we might be conducting a site visit, but it's very important to talk to folks on site, um, whether we do that remotely or um, actually visit. But there will be a list that the committee will identify who they would like to talk to, what roles, not the people, but the roles. So is there any, um, does, it, does it indicate anywhere, like how many meetings you think there will be for the search committee? Just for the people like who are working, right? the parents who, um, I know some What I'm anticipating is um, what's on here on the timeline, the initial meeting, June 8th. Um, the, the can we gave a deadline of June 10th. We posted May 30th and June 10th is the deadline for applications. Um, I'd like to hold the, um, after the initial meeting, by, I should say, by June 14th, actually call a meeting where after we come up with the parameters and how we're going to rate the candidates, it might take two or three hours to sit with the, with the stack, with each person. What, what's different in, in Conway, they took them home for a weekend and did it there. I think we, we're gonna need to just say, commit the time do it right now, we're gonna rate, and based on the criteria that the committee comes up with, based on the feedback from the faculty and the professional standards. Um, so I'm hoping by that, that's the um, following Thursday, that we'll at least be able to, um, so that day will be a long day. Um, the, the day where we sit, review applications, discuss, and select and be a, candidates. Like a weekday that's a Thursday. During, like an all day. That's a Thursday. Thing. And depending, I certainly want to be sensitive to people's schedules. So when we have the initial planning meeting, I'll offer options and we'll see what is best for people. But and before then, that, you'll probably have several meetings. No. Too. no one meeting, one, oh. one organizational meeting, 
Then um, I'm going to leave people some research to read about conducting searches and about administrative leadership. Um, so they'll read that over, over the next few days, and then we will come back together. Since the deadline's the 10th, it will give us time to um, review the resumes, and what I'm hoping to do is um, redact all of the names and have candidate one, candidate two, candidate three, mm -hmm. and that, re, um, that um, ensures that there is no unconscious bias for gender or um, any kind of ethnicity in names mm -hmm. that we just, and um, so that will take some time. That's a process of, of redacting the names. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so that's why I need four days to do that because that's a, um, a, a big digital. I, I will not be a voting member. I'm going to facilitate. So um, I will know who the, the names, but I'm going to give it to you as candidate one, two, but, and, and the team itself will, based on the criteria we agree to, will we'll rate them. And, um, and then it, we'll have, um, hopefully, after the 14th, that's a Thursday. Hopefully start the interviews that Monday. Depending on how many people we identify, if indeed the team identifies five, usually you need roughly an hour, about a 45 minute interview to an hour and then some time in between. Possibly if people's schedules allow, it would be one big day. Or if we identify more or people feel like five hours of interviewing is too much, we'll split it. So there's some flexibility built in, but that's why I said that week, like to get it done early in the week so that we could have the site visits before school is over. Because um, that gives everybody who works at the school an opportunity to meet, to talk to the finalists, and to give their feedback. So that's, um, the time commitment will be I don't know how fast people read. <laughs> so um, on the 14th, when we sit down, and I'm putting that as a tentative date, when we meet on June 8th, if, if most people say, you know, Wednesday's better, Wednesdays are better, you know, I want to be flexible there. But I'd like to walk out of here Friday knowing who we're interviewing Monday and Tuesday, or Tuesday and Wednesday, so that then we could turn around and have the person come before Friday, the last day of school, so that people can meet. Um, and actually, we're going to need two days because we don't want them coming at the same time. So, um, so that's the kind of crunch on it. it. It's not going to compromise the quality of what we do. It's just going to put more pressure on the candidates to make sure they can turn around and come back. And those um, last couple of days are not regular days. Correct. Days. correct. But it doesn't matter because what the important thing is is that the community and the staff gets to meet the people um, gets to meet the finalists, whether we have two or three, um, and gets to um, give some just candid feedback. What's your feeling about this person? They feel like a match, or whatever people want to say, it will be read. And then, um, so June 21st, oh, I said the, the, the site visit to the finalist schools, or by the 28th, I'm hoping to get the finalists to our school, to, our, to Waitley, before the last day of school. It might not be possible, depending on our interview schedule. You know, maybe we want to maybe we find eight people we want to interview, and we take it over three days. So that's why it's impossible to know exactly. Um, it's it's going to depend on the quality of the candidates <coughs> and um, whether we have five, six, seven that look great. We'll bring them all in. So. And who will be checking the references? You. Superintendent. And that's why it's very important to have um, at least two finalists because references, that's a, that's a confidential, you know, somebody who's put themselves out here and has gone through all that, we don't want to make so public that one of their references wasn't so crazy about them. <laughs> and that's really the, super, that's why the superintendent makes that decision and calls and, and really weighs out the words of the, of the references. But also we'll be reviewing the feedback. And um, so... It's as inclusive a process as I could um, uh, imagine making it and while still maintaining a um, high degree of um, quality of the process and ensuring that we do it in a professional manner. Another, yeah, two comments. One is, um, as we talk to the teachers also, this is very condensed. And if it, if it turns out that we don't have the quality in the pool or we feel like we're rushing, 
we are also prepared to do an interim principal if that mm -hmm. seems to be the best mm -hmm. solution for Waitley. I just want people to know we want it. We believe we'll find the good quality in this pool, mm -hmm. but um, we're also mindful that it is going quickly and things could happen that yeah, lead us won't to settle. I mean, sometimes sometimes your best candidates have their foot in another search and are offered something different so yeah we, d we can't assume that the one we like best will like us best so we have to um, leave ourselves Our options options open, right? yes and I I, um, I agree We're, this school is a, a fine place I've been enjoying being here um, and uh, we're not going to sell and the other thing is I don't know if we'd consider doing like a Google Drive where we could put all the documents for Absolutely. people to read so then if they do have time and they want to look at them ahead of the meetings that might yeah be a we good could do that do depending that. and that's why I want to have an organizational meeting first to find out what people's technology will. capacity what yeah. their preferred method of reading what their you know I, I want to be flexible to the people that we have but we won't do that until we have the committee in front of us and say here's options you know some people do prefer digital some people prefer print Anything else? No. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Louise. Thanks Thank for you all your much. good work on this. Thank you. Okay, so we'll go back to the unfinished, unfinished business. Patty. You want your agenda back? Thank you. Oh, thank you. So you can keep it if you want. Oh, I, I don't know. No, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. We'll probably see you a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> So last month we talked about the cafeteria team leader position mm -hmm. and the salary schedule. And uh, we decided to table it and have the vote tonight. It's uh, a position that we're having in all five of the schools that um, we agreed to, well we brought it up at the April joint committee meeting and for whatever reason it wasn't voted on and we thought it was, and it was, I thought it was. No, we were going to have the, the vote on the May agenda. Yeah, but then, on the so May it, agenda. Okay. But then so it, because we forgot to put the vote on the May agenda, we presented it to you again individually for you to vote tonight. I see. Okay. So, so and you can see by the data here, um, that there are some, you know, there's some additional chores, that's a, a responsibilities mm -hmm. for the position. Um, so they have to oversee and assist all aspects of the food production in the assigned school. They plan and direct the preparation and serving of all food. They work with the food service director for purchasing and ordering. Uh, they're responsible for taking monthly inventory. They ensure that the equipment is safe, clean, and in working condition. They maintain accurate production records conforming to federal departmental guidelines. And they maintain the health and food safety standards set by ServeSafe. So, and they also practice sound food allergy prevention. And uh, this is the scale depending on how many years the person has been here. <laughs> So um, if you are willing to vote on that. Um, so moved. Okay, Bob Howell. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Last month I uh, brought to you the non-union salary recommendations. And we tabled that because, well, we didn't table it. It was just for your information mm -hmm. of last month. Did I say last year? <laughs> <laughs> I, last month. I think it said last month. So last month. So tonight, um, if, if you have any questions, Patty's here. Um, if not, uh, if you would like to vote on those. Wasn't there an issue with the step of stepping the non-union salary? Folks, or am I not remembering that correctly? Um, so we, the when, long serving. Well, what what had happened was when we looked at the salary schedule for the cafeteria team leaders, mm -hmm. the person who works in that position in this building is already at the top. maximum. So she would not be receiving a raise this year because we could not go higher than that. Okay. Um, when we looked at the comparables of other Franklin County schools, mm -hmm. um, but as you know. Um, Julie Sibley and Kathy did attend last uh, month's meeting. Mm -hmm. Mary and I have met, so we are going to give Kathy some extra time 
which will increase her okay. her pay. Is that so, like a, an hour a week? Or uh, I think it's it, it's like a quarter of an hour yeah. a day. I believe yeah. we're giving her. Uh, we Julie. We gave. I had already made the change, and Kathy. We're now going to make. A, she's going to get 15 extra minutes a day. So okay. 30. It's two two and a quarter hours yeah. a week. And are we going to look to the preschool to help with that, or are we to pay for it, or will we going to just are we able to afford that? I think with, with the money that we have that we're going to have sitting in the account because mm -hmm. we've been using the general ledger that we'll be okay. Okay. Good. Which is good. Good. So this non-union set that's this from last month, right? Right. Yeah. right. And right. there's just two changes. One, of course, we wouldn't be um, approving. It, we would be removing the. Um, principal mm -hmm. and also today we did receive a resignation from a custodian so um, that one would be coming up um, you wouldn't be yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so that you wouldn't be approving that one either so those would be the only two changes okay. I make a motion for the non-union salary recommendations And the, you'll see a list. I don't know how many of you have the list, but. I printed a few. There's many, there's, well, there's actually just these two pages, but all of these, I don't know how many of you have these, but all of these are the policies mm -hmm. that, and Bob was at all those meetings, so the policies <laughs> that have been changed, and pretty much, Everything, everything is listed. Donna, Donna Hathaway did a great job on this. Uh, it was it was quite a lot of work to to go through each and every one of these. We did the, that work, and then I had to give that information to her, as she would strike out and or add. And as soon as you approve, as soon as the five school committees approve, it will go to the Massachusetts Association of School school committees and it will be posted uploaded on our website and we'll live by these policies but if you can see what she did she actually wrote in italics everything we did so you know naming facilities we updated to reflect best practices first aid added the policy by policy review committee superintendent to include notification of the mass department of public health of epin Demolit. Yeah, that's the it's word. just missing. Say that. I could have said there. it, but I didn't want to say it. It's missing no P. Word. It's missing a P. Oh yeah, there's no P there. Um, so you can see, like the wellness plan, uh, we took out the appendix and appendices, and we put that in, in our procedures. Sex education, a new policy to the districts. And we had a couple late ones, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. and they're all in yeah. here, alphabetical now. So uh, she did a beautiful job. Um, so custodial rights, updated language. So we took out we took out KJA, but we added in KBE, new number for p relations with parent booster organizations, and uh, public complaints, updated language. We deleted public complaints about school personnel. KEB because we made it um, KE period and KEC. So, but we went through all of these. It actually seems like we did a lot more than this, but <laughs> if we approve of these, this will be great. Not saying they won't have more coming about. Right, it seems yeah. like it's an ongoing thing now. Yeah. It is because so. the laws change so much, and as soon as the case gets heard, yeah. then everybody then the has to has back to up and change it. And how different are these from other districts? Is, I mean, are they identical? They're identical. Pretty so, much. So what is the work that you guys have to do just to adapt it to? To adapt it to our district. Mm -hmm. So I think that the essence of the law or the essence of the policy is pretty standardized. Mm -hmm. But then there's certain things and, and um, qualifiers that may not suit Frontier or Union 38 okay. or some that will make a difference that we would, um, that would protect us in uh -huh. our own uh, practice so everything had to be you know well thought out of and every angle just ensuring that we recovered liability wise 
because this will be out into the public and they'll understand too if they say, mm -hmm. well, how come I can't do this? And we say, well, it's policy KB. See, and you, need, you know, just look it we up. We used to get this policy book that was about yay thick. I think Every, I got that my oh first my year. But now these are all online, all online. through the um, district's yep. um, yeah, we, website, right? The uh, Massachusetts Association of Connects Schools to that. Connect, puts it on our site for us. Okay. And they're the, the keeper. But it's right on. That's where I go for everything. I, I don't look up in a book. Right. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Well, I think. Does anyone have a question for me? I do. I just. Maybe clarification ones. I don't remember. I have too many piles here. Um, the school council ones. Mm -hmm. um, Where are they? What numbers? Letters? These. Um, wait a minute. School. School. Uh, uh, B, the BDFA ones. There's an E, E1, E2, E3. Um, <clears throat> it says mm -hmm. in um, I think more than one of them something about the, the superintendent approves the school improvement plan but I thought it was also the school committee's job to approve the school improvement plan it says the school committee reviews it but the superintendent approves it because mm -hmm. I thought we voted on that and approved it we, we, we do we do vote on it but legally, the school committee does policy and hiring superintendent and business manager <coughs> and budget. And those are really the only three things okay. legally. I just want to but it's, sure. it's important, I think, to the school to understand and to know that the school committee is behind the improvement plan. So to have them vote, I think, is, is very important. They didn't have to vote the district strategic plan either, but they did. So and it's then, a way of accepting it, yes, really. Yes, it's just a way of accepting it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, BDFAE says the school council will meet quarterly, but mm -hmm. E3 says they need to meet at least once a month. We um, actually... We, Unless that was one of the newer ones. Those, that, yeah, that's... We actually... I didn't get to Yes, this. we changed that. We modified that for our practice. Okay. We didn't want to put something in um, that wasn't happening. Well, it's just not consistent between right. the two. One yeah. says monthly. And well, we actually combined uh, BDFAE. Uh, BDFA E1, E2, and E3, and they are all in this BDFA E, and they say quarterly. So was that one of the ones that was sent a second time? Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's too many. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. It's some great reading. If you, you know, get a laptop, go, go to bed and just read all the policy. Interesting. Well, it's important. To it's interesting. It is. The last time we did it was Marty. It wasn't years that ago. long three, ago. Three years, three years ago. We had a hundred and... We, it was a lot. I mean, we had some help from... Um, what's her name? Pat, Pat Korea. Yeah, yeah Pat Korea came time. and helped. And she would say, uh, you know, if you had a question, she said, let me make a note and I'll bring it back to the next meeting. And it was like, well, that's what you were doing this time. You had a, we had a question, you would get the answer, bring it back to us to the next meeting, and then we would go on to new ones. It was like. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I think that's where you, <coughs> your question earlier had come about the, the long time people. <coughs> because we did talk. Wasn't there an issue with yes. the policies? We, that we talked we're about sure how to handle there's them. A, there's a, and I forget what it's, it's a GB. Group. It's GB and GB1, and that is the uh, non union um, uh, policy that we have. And it was so complex and far reaching that the idea would be in the fall that a, a subcommittee would get together just to look at that. Oh, okay. Because so all that's we really. Sort of yeah, yeah. All we wanted to really look at was longevity <clears throat> but then that kind of dominoed into other things mm -hmm. um, so we decided to take okay. that but yeah that was what and i was what, and what we really want to try to do is have all the elementaries in the high school because the high school 
had one terminology for non-union, and then the Union 38 had something different. The Union 38 had some good things, and the Frontier had some good things. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is try to make them all the same when there's right. new when there's new hires at both locations. Try mm -hmm. to anyway. So GB is Frontier, and GB one is Union 38. And okay. Mm -hmm. Just. I'll make, can I make a motion for the oh, sure. policy changes and additions? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, a second motion to, to, to approve. approve. Yeah. I second. All in favor? Um, so we did the principal search. Mm -hmm. um, so interim leadership arrangement, I just wanted to make sure we're clear what's going to happen over the summer. Well, right now, um, Kristen is taking the lead. Okay. Kristen Gordon, the principal of Conway, she's taking the lead. And my understanding is that um, she, uh, in this trying time, she's doing a wonderful job. I think that the teachers are pleased with her um, affect, her way of handling things, her wisdom, and. So she's really great. I thought she'd be a good fit for in for here during this time, and uh, Louise is helping mostly through the um, the search process, which they she did the search for Conway. So this is a perfect fit for her. Uh, my understanding is the new principal will be hired probably within the first week oh, yeah. of July. And that would probably take two to three weeks, maybe, for that person to give notice where they are to come here. And I expect that the new person would be in place definitely by April 1st. And up until uh, August 1st. I'm sorry, <laughs> August 1st. And, uh, but meanwhile, I think Kristen would be available for any. Uh, Anything that would be happening at the school during that time, I think Kristen would uh, be able to answer personnel things, uh, do searches if, mm -hmm. if we're losing an IA, getting an IA, or filling out, you know, say we get a student, we receive a student that has, that needs a one-to-one -one or some kind of issue. I, I, I have a lot of faith in uh, Could Kristen. You just give me an idea of what happens in the summer here, because I don't think a lot happens in Waitley, right? So is the preschool is not in session, it will but be, they are having they a camp be. of some sort? Yeah. No, they're gonna, oh, are they I thought going they were going to be, gonna be in session. They have a but program, but I, I I'm they thinking were doing like a one month thing yeah, or something. And I think, well, there's a two week camp. You can choose one week, or, one week or both weeks, but I thought. I'm not sure it's here. I'm wondering if she is in centralizing. I believe there's going to be one in Sunderland and one in Deerfield. I do. I have to be honest with you. I did not think there was going to be one here. She did one two summers ago because Deerfield had closed because of the roof. Right. But you're talking about. Didn't we do the science camp here? Yeah, yeah, we did the that's science camp. That's not the preschool. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about the science camp. So there's going to be a preschool camp, but there's also preschool through the summer. You're saying the preschool through the summer is not here. I do not believe so. Okay, but I think the camp is. The whole but, summer? Well, I think no, Christy is doing a special weeks. camp to try and raise money for, for a playground. Oh, okay, playground. Oh, 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 yes. oh, okay, well that's, yes. Yeah, yeah that's possible. Actual, so they would yeah. probably be the only ones here at that time. And then in August, there's the science camp. Science, but the week before school starts, they'll have the science camp here. And yeah, then, that's. And nice. so then, other than that, there's really not much happening. No. I think usually Mary's here and the principal and maybe the, the school, custodian. The school nurse will be here if there's a camp or a school nurse. I don't. Yes. Because there was a school nurse here for invention camp. Well, every single every single room gets cleaned Clean, up and right. stuff. So that's that's a big part. We usually hire at least one of the high school kids. I remember in the past. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but they've always mm -hmm. hired somebody. To help the custodians and stuff, and um, so we have a bit of a gap there this year because of the turnover with the custodians. Or yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's very unfortunate, but um, they will they'll find the people. Bob Lesko. Yeah, they, it, so was Bob it was a college guy. It was a college guy who actually came back to talk to um, to 
you know, to support Andy. He came back and spoke. Uh, he goes to Greenfield Community College. Nice guy. So he'll be here, and of course, your the custodian you do have. Okay. So Bob will be overseeing that work. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. He, he generally does. In concert with the principal, but because yeah, right mm -hmm. at this point, yeah. 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 So will Kristen be in Conway, but supporting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she'll physically. Be she'll continue until there's yeah. the principal. She identity. may come in and, and check in with Mary, and okay. you know, but she uh, just uh, with her background knowledge and everything, she just was a it was a good good fit. Okay. And Patty, you'll keep an eye on the budget. I guess I'm just mindful of projects that happen over the summer. We want to make sure that we're not spending money and we don't have or And I have um, a report from Bob Lesko okay. for the next, um, so. But Patty also was talking about any extra money where we usually do some projects. We're, we're talking technology. More technology. More technology at the end of the year versus projects that never can get done at the proper time for the budget money and right. stuff. So like that. when you encumber money in June, by, at June 30th, the project should be in should process. Be started. It should I be see. in process. And with five schools, we can't always do that. So we thought we'd phone, we, Scott can get these technology These projects, projects going, going, going yeah. this month. Yeah. That makes sense. And then Bob can focus on the cleaning and maybe correct. whatever else might come up. We probably won't and do any carpets that, or anything this year, correct? Well, and then it's things that would like come up with the town warrant if they had given us money. And we've got other schools that did have warrant money. So we've got and the sprinkler system. And the yeah. sprinkler I've system. I've got that report right yeah. here okay. if you want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> Projects completed at Waitley Elementary School during this fiscal year include the replacement of the garage door and roof. That was last summer. New flooring and flo four classrooms, AC in the library, IT computer closet, and that was from encumbered 1617 funds, mm -hmm. and the purchase of a snow blower, which came from school choice funds. Several additional projects were also completed. These included replacement of the exterior gym doors, installation of a bottle filler water cooler, Repairs to pipes and installation of antifreeze in the heating system during extremely cold weather last heating system. Our IT department is currently finishing up a project to replace the phone system. The new centrally reset clocks and intercom systems will be replaced over this summer, and that's from Warrant Article Number 10. We are working with Brian Domina, Waitley Town Manager, who has put together a project to repair the sprinkler system in the school that is going out to bid this week. It currently has a projected completion day of August 31st, 2018. Brian has also indicated that Deerfield Academy has offered the school a used backup generator that may work out for the school slash town. Oh, that's good. You've been talking about that, Bob. Bob, so. oh, be so happy. I'm, I'm, that, I'm holding my breath still. Yeah. So okay. just... Did you, and if you talk to Brian, talk to him yeah, about I it. Will. Ask I will. him about it. So there has been a lot of work yeah, done. Yeah. And so the plan right now, the biggest plan, and that's why we didn't ask for any warrant articles this year was because we are hearing anywhere from 100 to 200 to whatever for thousands for the sprinkler. But we may have another way to blow it out and figure out exactly where the problem is. So that will come to fruition uh, in a couple of weeks. And Brian uh, took the lead on that, which was great of him to do. Right, and that's a priority. And then oh, finishing yes. the speaker. In the yeah, that's got to be another priority. So there's plenty to do. I'm not trying to find more projects. I'm just trying to make sure we're clear on what's getting done and that we we'll we have the money to pay for it. I so agree. That's well, some of these projects, we already have the money there. Yeah, just, it's been sitting. Just waiting for it to get done. <clears throat> okay. so. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So no votes necessary. That was the capital projects. I just um, wanted to take a minute to um, thank Lynn for her work, good work again with um, Waitley Elementary. And, thank you. Um, Wish you well in your next adventure. <laughs> um, and also to thank Pete for his good work with Waitley for the last nine years and appreciation for all that he's done. 
Um, and I know there's a lot of transition, but I think the school committee is excited about the future for Waitley, and I think it's a gem of the school, and we are going to keep it that way. Well, it tells you you got 21 applicants already. In, in what, the a first few days, yeah, not few even days, a week. So that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. So. Well, so that's all I have. Is there anything in the collaborative? Um, I did not, there was a collaborative meeting. I didn't go, it was the night of our school concert. Um, but they, was, I looked at the uh, agenda and the other documents and there's an executive report, which I don't know if that got forwarded to you yet. I don't know about Dr. Yeah, um, he did. Um, I, I really, I didn't really focus on it. Yeah. I was with him, we went to the, um, the collaborative uh, school, the Hampshire the ha ha graduation. Yeah, what is the Hampshire Educational Collaborative? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we went to that graduation on mm -hmm. Friday, and it, it was it was very it was very nice. Yeah, they had sent a video of some oh, of the students. Yeah, the so students. I think it was the same one they showed at yeah, the graduation. Yeah. So that that was very nice. Mm -hmm. But in the meeting, I think they talked about moving because they're they've been talking about either moving buying a property or doing so i think they probably talked about that and they may have gone into a closed session for that i'm not sure and then they had fiscal reports financial reports budget proposal executive director his evaluation um we did and the committee um presented the findings um so that's about it. Regular business. Regular business. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Principal, you handed out the enrollment. I did. Members. I just have one last thing. Um, uh, we'll be in touch via email for your availability to find warrants and join on. In the summer. <laughs> okay. I'm around. I mean, we don't have 10 things to sign. I see we had four things to sign tonight, but don't we usually have 10 things for... This gets us through the summer. Okay. I, um, I asked them to stop, finally, <laughs> about a month ago. Yeah. So that we would have money in the... It looks like we're in good shape with the budget for <laughs> the end of the year. So thank you, Patty and Lynn, for keeping that in control. Uh, I don't know, the school choice, is there anything? Does anybody know any, where we are on that? Maybe Kristen. Yeah, I do know that um, Louise had sent me an email, but I, I actually put it back to Kristen, and um, Kristen okay. is pretty much knowing who, where the room is and what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. I mean, second grade going into third grade, you know, looks pretty good. Um, you know, pretty good to be opened up. The fourth grade. A couple in yeah. fourth grade. And uh, so we need to really check what I think is amazing, you know, is the, the 16 and kindy. So that'll be a discussion that, um, you know, she can. So Kristen will be the one getting yes. that at this point. Okay. Do you know if, if anybody has applied for? Because we had it up on the sign for a little while. Yeah, I heard we have quite a bit. I got an email um, earlier this week. So, mm -hmm. okay. so okay. I know last year's kindergarten that went into first grade this year, they went from 16 to 20. Mm -hmm. yeah. With school choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think three school choice. Okay. Lynn, do you have any other updates? Just no. Thank you for everything. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So so I think motion adjourned. All in favor. Okay, 708 is.